Welcome back to Gatekeeper Media's coverage of the 2023 Skona Open. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Max Rigidnik. How's it going, guys? This is the first event of the 2023 Swedish Disc Golf Pro Tour, and Gatekeeper Media is very excited to bring international coverage to everyone. Yeah, we're here at uh, Bultofta Disc Golf Course. Uh, definitely a windier day than we saw in round one, so a lot of angles that we're having to think about more here, um, but plenty of birdies, uh, a couple putting woes, but yeah, looking to get hot on the back nine. And we'll start it off on hole 10, 252 meters, a par five, pretty open for a shot, gives you the opportuni opportunity to either lay up or go for it. And then the second shot becomes a much tighter corridor sloping from left to right basket kind of perched up towards the left side of the fairway and max we've seen some really good golf out of linus axelson birding uh the last three holes on the front yeah even eagle opportunity here maybe not in this wind um i'm not sure exactly linus's power threshold either but looking to get a little or got a little squirrely there caught up on the right side in that rough but um should be able to pitch out and still has an opportunity for the bir birdie and colin molestam going to make the same mistake both of them uh hanging their disc out too far wide even though they weren't trying to bite off too much yeah looking More. at these flags looking like a pretty strong left to right uh yuan making a, the correction but maybe a little over correction there finding yeah, the left side rough he both threw more overstable and more inside Anders showing what a veteran does playing that flat angle in the wind getting lots of distance um setting up a really good opportunity for the eagle if he wants it um hopefully kickstart in this back nine just a forehand position play by Colin. Linus also pitching out. And I guess I'm a little surprised to see backhand as the choice there, but well executed by Yoan. Yeah, Yoan coming from an ultimate frisbee background as well. So I know he has the forehand. I'm not sure if that just didn't fit this fairway that's sloping off to the right. Just wanted to, to keep the spin helping him stay on the fairway. Linus making some distance up the fairway, but should set up a up and down for par. And to nearly pin high on Collins third. Anders looking looking like he's going for the pin here. Uh, looking like he did a very good job as well. Yeah, very well thrown to manage the wind, keeps it low, and knows what kind of crown play he's going to get on the end. Vet move from Andish. Yuan looking to attack the pin on his third. Getting all the way up there. A little bit of ground play, but looks like it stayed close enough to have a short putt, maybe a little constricted with that bush. And this of getting packed down by the wind isn't able to flatten out leaves about a circle's edge putt colin looking straight at it maybe not as close as you would want to get it from there but setting up a nine ten meter putt for i think it's for his par Anders didn't get as close as i thought from his second shot but looks like an easy birdie from him yeah no more than three or four meters a good look, but cannot cash in. We'll be putting for bogey. Mm. First, a uh, real miscue from Linus there. Still looked like he had good pace on it, but just maybe, yeah, came out a little right. Just watch the difference in his, uh, his arm action on those two putts. The first one was very sudden. The second one was, it was quick, but it was deliberate it was on pole colin also carting the six the bogey six yuan for his par save 
And actually a birdie, able to sneak it over the rim. Nicely done. Yeah, nice to do that from the rough there. I, I missed that that upshot, but nicely done for the birdie. And also the birdie four for Undish. Maybe calming the nerves there, making those short birdie putts. Hopefully get things going on the back nine. Uh, hole 11, tight corridor, slanted fair, or yeah, fairway to the right. Uh, 78 meters shouldn't be more than a mid-range for these guys. Uh, anything you can just keep it, keep it straight. Hopefully get a, a birdie putt out of this tight par three. You hear the road noise. You see the you hear the wind noise a little bit as well, but hopefully shielded by some of the underbrush and trees. Yeah, a little surprising to see Yuan go with the forehand there and not the upshot on on ten, but. Again, hometown boy. I'm sure he's made that shot hundreds of times, so can't knock it till you try it. Anders looked like he got caught up a little early, as does Linus. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it gets a little tighter up top, so I'm surprised to see the height out of those. Colin definitely keeping a little lower, hitting the biggest part of this this gap but maybe a long look for the for the two i think as hard packed as the soil is as we see uh, a scramble that is temporarily in the fairway and then going to roll to the right uh i think the play is to kind of go over speed with a, a mid-range and try to run it into the ground i like that idea um, and as you can see, the, a pretty common trend on this course is when you get off the fairway, it's tough to get back to the to the pin. If you're playing too hyper aggressive, going for the pin, you might be looking at a, a quick bogey as these strokes add up real quick. And that looks like pure layup out of Andish. Colin maybe giving it a bit on that Annie. Uh, tough to tough to get around those trees with the right height, but should be an easy tap in for him. And you one unfortunately not getting the height on that one. Um, slight uphill putt, maybe thinking about the wind, hoping that it's going to lift, but unfortunately going to card the bogey. Anders cleans up his par. And at 78 meters, going to play two strokes over par for the card. Got another tight 83 meter hole on 12. Initial gaps, and then going to bend gently to the right. Uh, yesterday we saw a couple of forehand, or a couple of counterclockwise spends, and then one clockwise spend that was the most effective of the group. Yeah, definitely pick your poison here. Really tight gap off the tee. But anything that can start moving to the right and just avoid these trees. As I say that, trees not avoided. Um, surely a P2 from Andush, maybe just holding on to it a little longer than he hoped. Nice looking foreign from Colin, maybe leaking a little left. Yeah, I think that's the danger with the forehand is pushing it too straight while trying to get the fade to park the basket. Yeah, I think you need to have that hyzer release from the tee to get it moving to the right without getting to that left side rough too quick. Yuan getting caught up early. Linus looks like he's got the line. A little and unfortunate ground play, but birdie putt for Linus. You see him immediately pointing to the right, asking the disc to go there. Yeah, pretty aggressively turning hole to the right. Um, and yeah, that, that left side rough comes up really quick. So definitely have to have something turning right almost immediately out of the hand. Pretty good scramble by Yuan. Going to give himself a par opportunity from six to seven meters. And I think that's the second forehand we've seen from Andush and probably the second forehand I've ever seen from him. <laughs> Definitely backhand dominant player, but maybe that's a shot that he's added in the last couple of years. 
lofty look from Colin. Um, looked like he had it chain high just a little bit right. And looked like a tough combination of factors there between wind and obstructions. Venus, the birdie look. Looks like that's becoming his miss right now. Just leaving it a little right. Um, not sure if it's wind related or just rhythm if he's just aligned a little a little off to his normal putt but still giving a good pace good confidence but just finding that right side nice looking comebacker but tough to to burn that birdie opportunity there and Andush tapping in the bogey Join the Paul Macbeth Foundation's Builders Club to help bring sustainable disc golf experiences to people and communities around the world. Your donation will go directly to making a difference. Together we can make a big impact one small donation at a time. Hole 13, par 4, 131 meters. Again, pretty tight corridor off the tee, but just need to get down this fairway up into this kind of bowl here and you should be able to find a line up to the basket not a very long par four um, but basket a lot of trees to deal with on that upshot but if you can get down there as we saw from Henrik on the first round mm -hmm. you can have a jump putt up into the screen nice low penetrating shot from Yuan gets caught up a little early but I've even seen like the hyper aggressive roller play on this to look for get a look for two um, but looks like these guys happy with a birdie look. Great position for Linus. I think he can find the, the biggest opening in that upshot. Yeah, seem seem like a low fairway driver, just trying to push it as straight and as far as possible. Great uh, ground play there. Yeah, right into that bowl. Put him looking straight up the stairs. Yeah, it might be blind from there, um, but short enough that he should have no problem getting up and down for the birdie. And a little early from Colin there. And having to throw a forehand just to advance, no real opportunity to attack. This one looks like gap shot and then going to try to climb the hill and Got reasonably well done pretty clean hit a, a branch late in the flight but got up to the shelf and should have a bird, reasonable birdie putt for you one last tree had to miss pretty much the sweet spot there so definitely one I'm sure Colin is, is wanting back And standstill forehand, going to run long. A little hot from Linus. Um, definitely not a long shot. So I'm, not, I'm wondering if he just opted to juice it a little just to hit that gap. Um, and under showing the touch with the, the backhand turnover. Nicely done. Bullseye. And floaty forehand. Favorable backstop, uh, going to give himself the chance at five. Got a couple birdie looks here. Didn't look to come out of the hand clean, so I'm not. I'm sure. I'm wondering if that stance was a little awkward for him. But great looking birdie from Linus. Uh, tough, tough footing there. He looked to be a little, had to do a little yoga to get to his his position, but. <laughs> Great three from Linus. Yeah, that's why you got to stretch before you're around. I'm not sure how young Linus is, but um, hopefully not an issue for him at that age. <laughs> Andush, on the on the other hand, definitely a routine warm up for him. Um, playing in the Masters division quite quite regularly, but mm -hmm. nice to see him still playing the MPO on these bigger tournaments. And I don't think you've noted it in this back nine. Five-time Swedish champion, correct? Yeah, and Masters European champion 2016 as well. Hole 14, 
135 meters and presenting you with two options. You can lay up and then try to pitch across or try to go for the gold. Make yeah. the water carry in one. Small, small green there, but definitely attainable. Um, 135 meters, a pretty comfortable distance for maybe not everybody on this tour, but I would expect to see at least a handful of people going for it. Yeah, it just depends on what the wind is doing. And that was a really nice line to get the late flip up and glide, but is going to scoot long. And I believe that proceeds to a drop zone. Anders wanting no part of the water carry, just a backhand chip down and probably the same across. Yeah, and the line that Linus took, I think, is hard to, to let it stick on that green. I think if you can afford to go for more of a hyzer finish, leak it out to the right and then come into the green on more of a hyzer, you can stick the green easier, but also takes probably 20 or 30% more power. Yeah, absolutely. That, that way you're coming across the green and making the green as big as possible. Sure. Linus looking to make good from the drop zone. And we've got a couple of layups here. Pretty aggressive hyzer from Andish. Unfortunately coming up a little short. Seemed like he was kind of blocked out, may have been blind to the basket. Yuan going to go big hyzer. Sp spikes it down on the, on the green there, looking for birdie. Call yeah! into the forehand. Great touch. I thought it was looking good out of the hand and floats perfectly into the basket for the two. Who needs to go for the green from the tee when you can throw it in from yeah, that's, 70 meters? That's the easy fun. way to eagle it. Bro cast. Very well done. And you can kind of see the frustration in the, the body language and the pace of play from Anders. But, boy, that's a, that's a great run around the lake. Yeah. Definitely feels good to get a throw in like that. Um electing to play for the easy birdie and getting rewarded for the two anyways. Well done. Linus able to clean up for the par. Hopefully finding that putt again, keeping it center. You on for birdie. Able to connect. And I believe that means we're gonna get a small straight you hate to see it, but you love to see it when there's an eagle on the card. I'm just with the unfortunate five. Um, yeah, maybe just not didn't practice from that spot. I mean, you probably don't expect yourself to be cut off that much on that hole. Uh, hole 15, uphill par three, 90, 93 meters, plays probably five or 10 meters longer. Um, definitely forehand, backhand, Whatever you feel comfortable shaping this shop up. Colin with the two taking the box, but coming up a little bit short there. And Yuan running off the box with his forehand, hangs it out to the left, gets the gets all the distance he needs, and four to five meters, that's it. Yeah. You can hear the wind picking up again out in this open. But you won putting for birdie there. And a nice looking turnover from Linus there. Great line. Goes a little bit long, but should be no issues there. I'm just hoping to follow that line. Looks like a fairway, maybe from him. Maybe a mid. I um, you know he throws that MD3 a lot. Maybe 11, 12 meter birdie putt from Andish. And headwind putt nearly manages it but we'll have to settle for a par yeah got the height right there maybe just wind doing some unexpected things to the left right to left movement a couple more birdie putts here great hit from colon looking to keep that going off that eagle
This would be big for you on. Slow nose up putt and able to manage the wind as well. Back to back birdies, getting him to two under par, eight overall. Yeah, Yuan has been playing pretty conservative today. Um, windy round, he knows maybe two, four under par is gonna be enough to climb the climb the ranks here. Why disc golf? It's the people. It's fun. It's being in nature. It's the lucky shots. It's the feeling. It's different. It's the challenge. It's the throws. So come out. Grab a disc or two. And let it fly with Lone Star Disc. Hole 16, 205 meters, a very open tee shot that you hope will set, your, self, set yourself up for a position to throw in between two sets of trees. And the left and right gonna play as hazards for most of the way down the hole. This is gonna cut roll, but not get all the way back in. Yeah, 205 meters, not long for a par four, but they have created this little runway of hazard to keep you keep you from just kind of an open bomber. So there is a very specific landing zone. Um, you want looking to pull that a little bit right, but does it have time to get back? Unfortunately not. And very nearly double penalizing himself by being in the shul and in the hazard. Yeah, don't need too much off the tee here. So maybe surprising to see these guys go a little so wide maybe just disking down for a mid-range or neutral fairway as it looks like Andish is doing but that's going to track left as well yeah he come up came up on that uh tee box pretty quick so maybe he is just a little little frustrated just wants to get off the course at this point Colin looks like he's laying up to the sweet spot about uh, maybe long look for the for the par save and because there kind of is a dog leg in the second half of this hole, if you're not set up in that sweet spot, you won't be able to see the basket, which complicates everything. Yeah, pretty comfortable forehand here. Looking a little early. I know there's OB to the right there as well, but looking to be clean there. No OB graphic there. Yuan kind of playing perpendicular to the fairway to get back to the landing zone and does so successfully. Should be a little short pitch from Colin up to the pin and does it beautifully. Overall, he played the hole pretty well. He didn't miss by com coming back in all that badly. He's going to settle for a five. Looking to be the same thing from Yuan. Pulled it a little left, but close enough to the basket should should be able to save his bogey. And Anders looking to pick up the pace, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty routine upshot there from Anders. And from the rough, unable to get out. Linus going to have an obstructed putt from nine, ten, maybe eleven meters. Wow. Great up and down there. What a hero. I'm sure he didn't see a good line to the basket there as he went for the over over the top, but great to keep that angle, nose angle flat and perfect pace right into the basket. And splashing out right side is Yuan. Going back to Linus, sometimes you just have to put it up there and let hope be your best friend. Yeah, I mean, nice to stop the bleeding there. It didn't look like he was managing that rough all that well. I mean, it, it is very thick there, so I'm sure he didn't have much, but very nice to get, a, get away from that hole with the par. Hole 17, uh, 87 meter par three. Not much to think about here. Straight shot, miss the, miss the branches probably skip on the ground a little bit as it goes a little uphill at the end 
And if this gets some ground play, it's going to scoot all the way there. You just hope there's no Velcro grass. Yeah, it looked like a reasonable putt for, for Linus. More of a hyzer flip from Colin. Drifting a little left, but looks like he caught circle's edge-ish. Birdie putt for Colin. And this tracking, but stable enough to beat the uh, grabby bush. Very smooth from Andish. Looks like an MD3. Leaked a little long, but I'm sure I'm sure he's happy with that. And Yuan going to play a little more overstable for the ground play. <laughs> Saying that they are basically on top of each other, so getting a little little skip off the other guy's disc. So nice looking pot from Colin. Starts off the birdie, the birdie putts. Great hit to follow up that that bogey on 16. You see a lot of different colors in those last few holes for Colin. Nicely done by Linus. Strong putt there. Looks like he's got his his uh, alignment right again, right on the pole. Good pace. Able to pick up the birdie. Moved to two two under on the round. Yuan, hoping to not repeat the putting wobbles from 16. Thinking about it, but great hit from him. And you see the fist pump. There's a lot of relief in that. Now all the pressure to get the, the star frame from Andish and connect. Definitely a roller coaster from Andish, but he's he's sprinkled in some really nice nicely played holes. Uh, yeah, just that big blunder on hole three. Hole 18, our final hole of the day, 77 meters. A mandatory makes you go to the left side and the basket elevated, uh, but you're more or less level with it as the as the tee pad points you downhill. This is dealer's choice on what you want to throw as long as you can make the gap and try to get an opportunity relatively close. Looks like a little arid release from Linus. Didn't look like he wanted to hug that tree all that much with the backhand, but... So yeah, gets caught up, probably has a long look at the birdie. But with that el elevated basket, probably making that a tough look. Colin leaking out left. Again, probably a long look at that elevated basket. I would expect, I would expect some layups from there. Um, downhill, elevated basket, last round. Just want to keep it clean. Definitely no layup coming for Andesh. Great looking shot from Andush again, relying on that P2, keeping it flat and shaping that fairway nicely. And the error you cannot make, missing the mandatory for Yuan, has to go to this drop zone. Yeah, electing for the forehand from the T should keep keep that mistake out of question, but unfortunately just a little early release and yeah, happens to the best of us. Hoping to get up and down from that drop zone. And didn't realize Linus got caught up this early, so. But also didn't look like the most layup of layups. Uh, maybe <laughs> giving that a half bid. I think when you have speed to spare on your putt, everything looks like a run. Also a good bid from Colin, so maybe these guys looking to go a little aggressive on this last last hole. Maybe jog, jogging for position. I'm not sure if they are checking the Ching app to see where they are on the standings. But. Sure. When you're that final card, you, you do get the foreknowledge of what everyone ahead of you has done. And tell us about that, that app that gets used for this tournament. Yeah. So I'm not sure what year they in introduced it, but it's a Swedish Swedish app, just like Udisk has stats, scores, live stream or live, live scores. So um, they've elected to use that for national tour and big tournaments all in Sweden. Um, had a little rebrand. I think it was. Ooh. Anyways, Ching, check it out. I need to have competition and innovation in in disc golf. Linus closes out with a three and a pretty solid two down overall. Eight down, uh, two down for the round. Eight down overall. And Yuan going to be a frustrating four, but a pretty solid even round. 
Yeah, and a couple birdie putt miss or birdie putt miss from Andish and another short one from Colin. So whole 18 on paper should be a lot of birdie opportunities, but both rounds here proving to be not the easiest par three on the course. We thank you so much for joining us. You see that Linus is hanging on to a top 10 spot. Everybody else uh, taking a couple steps backward, but one more round to make some good progress. And only the first event of the year for the Swedish Pro Disc Golf Tour at the Skåne Open. And once again, we're going to see uh, a couple new faces here yeah, going Gustav, into round three. Gustav de Lien putting together a really nice round to jump up to the to the lead card. But yeah, Yusuf and Yalmar coming back to the lead card. For Max Rugitnig, I'm Andrew Fish, and we hope sincerely that you'll join us in round three.